uh, Nadia Tolokonikova. Uh, she is a founding member of the uh, Pussy Riot Collective in, uh, in Russia. Um, as many of you know, she spent uh, almost two years in jail following uh, a protest at, the, at a church in Moscow. Uh, she's been a very prominent member of the uh, Russian uh, uh, kind of activism and uh, civil society movement, and uh, she's been doing many, uh, many quite interesting things uh, since her release from prison, so we're uh, very interested to, uh, to hear from Nadia. Uh, welcome. Hi, thank you for coming. Um, I would love to start from small uh, part from my book, which I wrote about uh, my prison time. Uh, and yeah, we need to. Yeah, this kind of mood. So I arrived to my prison camp. Darkness, strong wind, stars. The country air is crisp, clear, and ringing. The station is surrounded by tall trees already bare. It's autumn, and illuminated by the white moon and the lights. A dozen men toting machine guns surround the prisoners who have got off the trains, dogged, barking. Don't move, stand still. Two meters from us squats uh, an inmate in shabby clothes and a black hat. He's curled up, curled up in a ball, holding his hands behind his head. The hat, is, the hat is pulled down so low his face is invisible. All you see are the clothes and the ball of humanity beneath them. He is a maximum security prisoner. The train starts moving. I catch the gazes of the curious free passengers and conductors who are glued to the windows. Go on to Moscow, go on to Chelyabinsk, or resign. I don't envy you. So this, you could see uh, this type of Russia which we are trying to escape. This Russia which we are trying to change. The Russia without free press. The Russia with prisons for everybody who have a voice. Uh, the Russia where you could find yourself in jail just because you have bad relationship with COP. Because right now we have just uh, 0.4 percent of acquittal rating. So it means that if you are in bad relationship with COP and he want to accuse you, you will end up in jail for sure, or at least you will be convicted. This is a regular prison in Russia. And um, since I've been released from my prison, I started an NGO, which is called Zona Prava, which means zone of justice. And I really want prisons not look like that, because it is a shame. I knew that, uh, for example, in Estonia, prison used to look like that. But recently, uh, I visited uh, Estonian prisons uh, as a part of my human rights experience. And I visited several prisons in Estonia. They mostly don't look like that anymore. It has to be changed, and it could be changed. So countries, like your country, they give me hope that something could be changed, that we could get rid of our Soviet heritage. Uh, our prison guards didn't change their mentality since Stalin times. They still treat prisoner as animal. And actually, I love animals, and I think they, they don't deserve this kind of treatment as our prison guards treat Russian prisoners. 
This is a factory where people have to work 16 hours per day without day offs. And they have a right to uh, go to shower and to wash their hairs just once per week. And if you will do it um, in the middle of this time, uh, you will have a record that you commit um, a misdemeanor in prison. And you will not able to get your parole just because you washed your underpants or you washed your hair. That's me on hunger strike in prison. I started my hunger strike because I wanted to end these horrible conditions in my prison. I asked my prison officials to seize the time, uh, the working time from 16 hours per day to eight hours per day, which is actually required by our criminal, by our um, uh, law in Russian Federation. So everybody should work not more than eight hours per day, but not prisoners, because we are not humans. That's why we decided to start our media outlet. Because if we have a lack of free, independent voice in Russia. And when we've been released and we decided to uh, start this NGO, we just find out that everything, every independent voice is shut down in our country. Our country in 2012 and our country in 2014, it's two different countries. So it was an, our um, moral responsibility to uh, provide a platform for people to speak about reality, to share the truth with their citizens. So we started a media site, which is called Media Zona. Cops weren't super happy about this site, as you could see. From punk rock to prisoners' rights. A lot of people accuse us right now of, of building institutions. Yes, we are, trying to build, we are trying to build institutions. And I think that uh, the real punk right now in Russia is to build a free and independent institutions. And uh, we are doing it through uh, social networks. We are doing it through media. Our media outlet is an um, online media outlet. So. We hired all reporters who've been fired uh, because they wanted to stand uh, up um, to their political views. And we hired them since uh, last two years. And uh, right now, uh, our media outlet is going relatively well. We want to develop our content. We started as a law enforcement media outlet, but then we started to cover political processes in, in Russia, too. We cover... Um, cases uh, of censorship and uh, we work bo as two teams. We have one team, um, a non-profit organization, 20 lawyers who work all around the Russia and uh, help prisoners, victims of police departments, uh, victims of tortures in police departments, sorry, and uh, people, artists uh, who face censorship in Russia. And what we are doing with Media Zona, we are covering all these stories. Sergei Sminov is the editor in chief of our media outlet. And as he points out the situation right now in Russia, that everything, all political life in our country has moved from streets and from parliament to courts and police departments. So that's why we decided to focus on these topics. But uh, meanwhile, it doesn't mean that Pussy Riot doesn't do their uh, art activity anymore. So this, could you see um, me taking part in uh, 
art performance of uh, one young artist. She decided to wear a uh, prison uniform for one month. Uh, and she wore this prison uniform uh, every day at her university, at her job, everywhere, and in the subway. And um, when I appeared in my police uniform on the streets of Moscow, I've been uh, arrested immediately. I could walk in my prison uniform just for three minutes, and then they immediately arrested me. This is a great uh, quote from the editor-in-chief of our uh, media outlet. He said that the main problem of Russia is that people don't know how to work anymore. And what we are trying to change in our system, we want to, um, uh, we want to highlight the problems of the system. And you know, even uh, people who want to really uh, uh, change something from within the system, they couldn't do it uh, actually because they try to do something in, in the right way, and then their boss come and say like, no, you shouldn't do like that, you should be corrupted. It's your duty to be corrupted here. And it's not like my country should look like. As a media outlet, we uh, established collaboration with um, several Western media outlets, so if you want to check what we are writing about, you could check it on Vice or you could check it on Guardian. We have a collaboration with uh, both of these news and uh, new outlets. And that's uh, a photo from uh, our last music video, which is dedicated to the same topic actually as our media outlet. Uh, this is uh, this piece called, it's called Chaika, and this is the name of uh, the main prosecutor of Russian Federation. Uh, he's in charge of uh, a lot of crimes in Russia, he's in charge of uh, several murders, but he's still uh, the main prosecutor of Russian Federation. How it could be, I don't know, but that's the nature of political system in Russia. What we've done in our music video, we just portrayed what he actually doing his usual life, you know, his lifestyle. Just killing people, taking bribes, praising Putin. Я повстречала его весною. Позитив на душе и кураж, сил на подвиги вдоволь хватает. Поняла? Чмоки. Скучаю. Okay, that's one part of my story. And the second part of my story is art, in still art. So I, I would like to show you some part of uh, our new music video. Будь смиренным, будь кротким, не заботься о тленном. Власти данный Богом, сынок, будь навеки верным. Я люблю Россию, я патриот. Живи просто святому подобным. Не ешь скоромное, потребляй скромное. И станешь на ноги скоро. Зампрокурор, прокурор, коммунистическая партия, дружба с олигархами. Я патриот, сам из Хабаровского края. И дела решать не в какой-то там вашей геропе выбираю, а на родине, в России матушки предпочитаю. 
быть смиренным, быть кратким, не заботься о тленном. Власти данной Богом, сынок, быть навеки верным. Я люблю Россию, я патриот. Отдыхать, конечно, приятнее в Греции или Ницце. Не поеду на Форос, говорят, там перебои с электричеством. Но если кто меня спросит, иметь бизнес тут или за границей, то тут я сторонник российских традиций. Кого надо допросим, порешаем, кирпич вовремя уроним, рыбам скормим. Кто не нужен, того похороним. So actually, if you want to look at that, you can check it on YouTube. I don't need to play the whole thing for you. So, um, I mean, let's have a conversation, and we could, we could proceed with every, everything in a conversation. I hope it wasn't, I wasn't too boring for you. So thank you, uh, thank you very much, Nadia, for the nice presentation. Uh, so to start out, I'm interested to know a little more about uh, uh, Media Zona and uh, and your plans for developing it. You said it started as uh, focused on uh, law enforcement and uh, legal rights and prisons. Um, do you plan to kind of extend the content to a, a sort of a broader uh, type of subject matter? to be a real general interest news outlet? Is that part of your plan? I think in some way we uh, are part of general interest because, like, uh, as I noticed before, it's the main political thing, uh, the main political things in Russia is happening right now in courts and police departments. But yes, obviously, we want to cover more, um, more fields. Like, I'm personally super interested in um, exploring more um, question of uh, culture, of art, because uh, I could see that a lot of people uh, really would like to understand more about um, contemporary art, for example, in Russia, but they just don't have places when they could check it. And uh, when I've been in prison, I, I spoke a lot with people about uh, contemporary art, and they, they've been quite angry at me at first. Um, like, how could you be so provocative? But then I gave them some examples, and uh, literally in a few hours, they changed their mind, because I just explained them that the same uh, form of art as a picture on the wall. Mm -hmm. It's just new form, it's a new shape, it's a new language, and um, you can easily explain that. Mm -hmm. And so, I want so, to do that. So you want to bring some of your artistic uh, uh, sensibility and interest to the actual journalism that you're doing with uh, Media Zona. Yeah, we mm. used to have really cool um, cultural uh, media outlet in Russia, but we don't have it anymore, partly because of political reasons, because they were quite openly, uh, they, they were super open, and like, you know, some art uh, were political, so they experienced some troubles with uh, financing because uh, generally how they usually close um, media outlets in Russia, they don't, they still don't kill people. They, I mean, they don't kill journalists usually. They do it sometimes, but not every day. They don't put them in jail, but they uh, just cut financial um, structure. Mm -hmm. Because usually they owned by Russian oligarchs, and it's quite easy to push them and say, like, you look, you will lose your um, oil and uh, gas enterprises if you will, if you will <laughs> speak totally like you're speaking right now. Right. So that's why for us it's really important to have uh, an independent, independent financial system. And have you, have you had problems in terms of the, the government trying to interfere with what you're doing? We had some warnings from government. So uh, you know, right now we're working officially, so they have a license. But um, if you have a critical uh, amount of these warnings, which is just only three of them, they could take off your license. And right now we have two uh, of these warnings, so they, they could possibly take this license back from us, but it will not be a big problem for us because uh, we have the like, super special team. They are fighters, and they uh, used to work in a lot of uh, different media outlets in Russia. So, 
like they know what they are fighting for, so mm -hmm. they could easily work without this mm -hmm. license. I mean, at least <laughs> we we are punks. So <laughs> well, you'll figure it's out. It's not a way. big it's not a big problem. Uh -huh. So do you think? Um, I mean, obviously the the media outlet is one way in which you can use kind of technology and the internet to try to. Uh, uh, get your message out, to communicate, to, to draw people into your activism. Are there, are there other ways in which technology and the internet can advance the kinds of things you're trying to do? Um, I don't think that I will, <laughs> I will say something super special about that because uh, I don't think really that you have to rely only on technologies. I mean, I'm I'm speaking about that as a person who uh, all my life uh, doing all my uh, activism through internet, but I, I, I'm not that type of activist who think that you could change everything by, by clicking on Facebook likes. Mm -hmm. It is another problem and uh, you have to be proactive, you have to start your own platforms, not just using existing ones. Mm -hmm. So do you think platforms like, say, Vcontact Day or other social media platforms that people use sometimes for political organizing and things like that, at the same time they can be used to kind of track you and uh, keep track of what you're doing? I mean, do you think these things are, uh, are helpful to you to have these kinds of social networks? Of course it's helpful if you try to use it in a smart way, but uh, as we saw in um, process, uh, during process in Hong Kong, for example, uh, government super, easy could, like, super easily could shut down these um, networks. So you have to have some protection. So mm -hmm. you, you have to have alternative structures, how you could uh, organize your activity without social networks to, mm -hmm. to what you're, I mean, you con could not rely just on Facebook or Twitter. I mean, take a look at uh, Turkey and mm -hmm. Egypt, all this experience give us an impression that you, ha you have to find some alternative, way, alternative ways. And they did it in Egy Egypt, actually. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you the know, same as thing you in Ukraine. Like, yeah, they started, they, Facebook helped a lot to create this uh, Maidan, this revolution in the center of Kyiv. But uh, later, they, uh, they started to explore some other ways of self organizing on this square, and so it became more important to communicate from person to person right, than the to in communicate person through Facebook. Kind of performance, physical meetings, those yeah. things, yeah. Um, are there things you think the, the technology industry uh, can or should be doing uh, that it's not doing now to support um, civil society activists in places like Russia? You know, I would say that uh, I'm really happy that they are uh, trying to do that at least. Uh, so I visited uh, Google office several times. I couldn't say that they've been super helpful, <laughs> but at least they're trying to be helpful. I mean, it's a positive sign for me right now so that um, capitalism try to show uh, their human face and uh, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not approaching that human, uh, that attempt with um, so uh, with, with cynicism, I, I think that's a positive thing. And like in future, we could we could see uh, a lot of corporations who will take some moral responsibilities on their shoulders. And um, like my good friend uh, Perry Chen, who is a co-owner of Kickstarter, they just mm -hmm. switched to another type of uh, entity, from for-profit entity to public. Um, benefit corporation, and it means that they wrote in like the ki their own kind of constitution of their company of Kickstarter that it will be not uh, for profit corporation first of all. Yet they, yes, they would gain some money through their corporation, but it it wouldn't be the first goal. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward uh, more. Uh, to the world where, where, where more and more corporations will take uh, this kind of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on that point, it, it's interesting because I think, you know, Pussy Riot as a movement obviously is against uh, repression in Russia, but it's also a little bit, uh, it seemed to me anyway, a little bit, you know, anti-capitalist, uh, you know, very much a kind of a uh, left-wing sort of approach to, to politics. And so I wonder, 
how does that sort of square with the idea of kind of building institutions? In other words, do you, do you believe that the kind of Western model is a, is a viable model? Uh, or is there some other kind of model that you're thinking about? First of all, uh, I would say that Western model was heavily influenced by uh, socialist ideas. And I mean, Karl Marx is not a Russian guy, mm. <laughs> as you probably know. Mm. So it's like it's part of Western culture to um, like all these uh, ideas of um, socialism. And uh, right now you could see Thomas Piketty, mm -hmm. who, is, who just wrote this 21st uh, century capital. Uh, on how we could improve our economies, how we could improve our government to uh, get rid of this enormous gap between 1% and 99% mm -hmm. uh, of population in terms of, in terms of money issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we could see Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. um, yes, probably he will not be a candidate. We could we could say it right now, but uh, I believe that his campaign is um, enormously special because um, I was looking since uh, the uh, Occupy Wall Street movement uh, in the United States, I was looking for somebody from mainstream politics who could express these this ideas um, broader. Mm -hmm. Because the problem of Occupy Wall Street was that they um, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't speak with uh, the broader audience. Mm. And so that's why I don't use actually this word uh, capitalism and anti-capitalism so much in my own language because I don't, don't want to, uh, people to be afraid of me mm -hmm. just because uh, I consider myself as a social democrat. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, re rhetoric of Bernie Sanders is much more... Um, understandable for me because he's, he's trying to speak about some specific issues and specific problems, not speaking about like g general uh, ideological differences because I, I, f I believe that we should find common ground and not to fight, fight about words. We did mm -hmm. too much in 20th century and it brings us to humanitarian catastrophes. Mm -hmm. So you're a, fan of, uh, you're a fan of Bernie? I'm a fan of Bernie, yes. <laughs> You've gone to some of his rallies, uh, <laughs> feel the burn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and what about other, uh, what about Trump? Any thoughts on Mr. Trump? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, fuck it, fuck it. I couldn't stand with, with Trump. So yeah, I have Trump and I have Trump on my ass today. <laughs> 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 it says, make America great again. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 seriously, I think it's super scary. And um, especially uh, take, uh, having in mind that he is a body of uh, Putin. I mean, they are together. It's, it sounds so scary. I mean, they could destroy the whole world because, like, they are both try to work with uh, the worst feelings of human being. Mm -hmm. They they try to uh, make people more jealous. They try to uh, play on fears of human beings. And mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing what Hitler used to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not saying that they are the same as him, but their uh, political myth mythology is super close to his mythology. So right. that's why it's scary. Right, right. So just to go back um, uh, to another topic, you know, obviously from your remarks, your uh, time in prison was, was very traumatic and, and I guess formative in some way. I mean, what, what kind of lesson do you take from that experience? First of all, not to fight about words, as I mentioned before. So uh, I used to be more a uh, more person of, from subculture. Mm -hmm. but Right now, I don't try, I try not to constrain myself, myself in some specific subculture. I, I try to understand people, and prison could teach you how to do that, because just imagine you have to spend like one year or two years in one cell, in one small room, with terrible um, conditions, with four persons, and uh, some of them uh, don't like Putin, some of them like Putin, some of them don't like immigrants, and um, 
some of them don't treat themselves as feminist and they really believe that men should rule the world. And I mean, you have to, you have to deal with all of these interests in one room for several years. And that is real politics for me. That is a place when you could understand how to, how to um, not, not try to push these people, not to force these people to take your position, but to share your experience in a way so they will do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. And actually it happened with me, so. Like, I, I was able to uh, persuade people to take my position, but not by uh, actively, you know, praising my position, but mm -hmm. just by sharing my experience. Mm -hmm. well, and uh, are there people that you were in prison with that you're in touch with outside of prison? Yes, I met even one prison guard uh, from my last prison in Siberia, and she was really helpful, and uh, she was uh, super warm to me, uh, partly because uh, she, she saw, uh, she, she was a, um, audience, uh, part of the audience of TV, uh, independent TV channel, which is called TV Rain, and it used to be, um, quite widespread in Russia. But mm. then uh, our government stopped TV rain. Uh, and yeah, so he was, he was on my political side, but he obviously he didn't uh, show it openly. Mm -hmm. But from human perspective, she, she was trying to do everything what she could do for me, like to give me some news from outside and mm -hmm. uh, to pass some highs from, from my relatives. and. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm in touch with some people who are in prison uh, right now, like in uh, the worst prison when I've been, uh, it's the uh, Mordovia region. It used to be a uh, region for political prisoners. Um, but right now we don't have political prisons technically, but they still have the special skills. All prison guards in this region, they know how to, uh, how to kill your will to speak something mm -hmm. and they they applied it a lot on me so um yes i'm in touch with uh, some women from this prison and um, they were the reason why i decided to start this non-profit mm -hmm. because they were like yes i will be uh, i will be on freedom but they have to be in jail still mm -hmm. and they really helped me a lot and uh prison uh, was a Strange, in a strange way, was the place when I started to believe in humanity and in uh, compassion more mm -hmm. than I used to believe when I, I didn't taste the prison. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so the, um, the nonprofit for prison reform and justice, um, have you gotten much support for that? I mean, financial support? Are there people in Russia and outside <laughs> who... Um, who are interested in that? It's kind of hard to do um, crowdfunding in Russia right now. Because as you probably, uh, maybe you've heard about Alexei Navalny, who is the main oppositional uh, politician in Russia. And uh, he was quite successful in crowdfunding. Uh, and uh, he raised like, millions of rubles uh, through his campaign. And then uh, our government wasn't so happy about that. So they decided to prosecute all, not just people who um, are like, um, actors of uh, politics, but uh, j people who are just um, give some money to their campaigns. So they started to call them to um, ask, uh, to, to call to their uh, workplaces. So people started to have some troubles because of that. A few people were fired because of that. So uh, I don't want to put some um, danger on people who are giving me money, so that's why I don't uh, collect money uh, in Russia so from like, my fellow citizens. And wealth, wealthy people have their own problems with giving money to our initiatives because we are kind of enemies of the state. So mostly uh, the way how I'm collecting money right now, I. Uh, I raise, uh, I raise it through my own fees. Like, for example, I'm taking part in Glastonbury and mm -hmm. um, I'm giving a speech or like, I'm taking part in concert. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. that's how it works. And I made several fundraisers and uh, I know some 
people like uh, Ron, uh, Roland Emmerich. He's a Hollywood director. Who, who is that? Roland Emmerich. Emmerich? He, he, he's uh -huh. director, yeah. He, uh -huh. He's doing Hollywood movies. Uh -huh. But for some reason, he, he felt he felt connection with our cause, and uh, he, he just donated one hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Interesting. So which was quite helpful. Uh, <laughs> I'll bet, yeah. Um, do you run into any kind of, um, say, resistance or resentment from your uh, comrades in the uh, more underground uh, movement now that you're? you know, moving in a slightly different direction, you spend a lot of time in the West, you come to events like this. Does that create some, some tension? Um, I would say that a lot of people from uh, underground movement uh, in Russia, they are living in the West now. Mm -hmm. Or if they don't live in the West, they want to live in the West. <laughs> <laughs> because if you're talking about uh, anarchist circles, they don't live uh, with boundaries in their lives, so that's why, um, I mean, they always travel a lot, so it's not a big deal for them. But, uh, I mean, sometimes I have hard times with, uh, peop uh, with uh, leftist and anarchist circles on the West, because we have um, kind of different perception of what, is, uh, what, is, what does it mean to be a left wing today. Uh, and uh, I understand that, like, for uh, this country, for uh, Western countries, it's like, super different because you already have uh, all institutions. And yes, of course, you can go to a museum and like make a shit in a museum if you already have a museum. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm living right now in the situation when I don't have a museum, and in order to be a contemporary artist, to be uh, a rule breaker to have uh, a possibility to go to a museum and to make a shit in this museum, I have to build this museum, first of all. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing right now. But mm -hmm. I really want to make a shit, too. You really want to make? Shit. A shift? Shit. Oh, shift. shit? Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, you because like, uh, as you usually portray anarchists, they mm -hmm. have to go to a museum and just, um, I don't know, pee or see some pictures. I, I mean, I'm up for it. I'm, I'm started from this point mm -hmm. because I'm qu quite critical person. But right now, I feel that our uh, president behaved like anarchist. He behaved like punk. He used a lot of slang words in his language, and uh, he tried to destroy everything, like mm -hmm. pretty much everything what we have in our country, mm -hmm. our economy, our culture, our art, our philosophy. and. So that's why I feel responsibility to build mm -hmm. all these things. Mm -hmm. are, are you optimistic about uh, eventual political change in Russia? I believe that it will happen at some point. I couldn't give you, I couldn't give you exact time when it will happen, because I'm not a god and <laughs> like, I don't have direct connection with God. Uh, but uh, I learned from prison that uh, when I had to stay with, you know, so-called common people. Putin uh, talk about common people so much, but uh, it seems that he doesn't know them because uh, a lot of, like, so-called common people, they don't really, ha they're not so happy about what's going, on, what's going on with their country. Like, we don't have really good medical care, uh, and technically our um, uh, health care system is free, but uh, because of the amount of corruption in, in our system in general, uh, in order to have good um, medical treatment, you have to pay um, a lot of money. You have to pay a bribe. And um, a lot of people just don't have this money. And they have uh, relatives, they have mother who is old, and they couldn't pay for her treatment. And, and I mean, all these social problems, uh, at some point, they will lead people to uh, political political questions. Mm -hmm. Some of them are so asking these political questions. Some of them are not asking. They, they, they still believe that Putin is a good side. Mm -hmm. They believe that Putin, Putin is a good, but some, like, it's, a, it's a local problem. So you think the support for him is kind of thinner than it seems? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, I, obviously, a lot of people, they're watching Russian TV channels. So I couldn't say that support of Putin is total fake. Obviously, but like if you take a look at every dictatorship, it's 
like Hitler, Stalin, all of them, they had 99% of support. And you know what happened with this poor 1% who didn't support them. So uh, it's usual dictatorship and like nothing more. Mm -hmm. So we're, um, we're almost out of time here, but um, just as a last question, I wonder how you, um, you've done a lot of different things, both by choice and not, you know, in, in uh, say, the last five years. And uh, do you think, going forward, do you think of yourself as kind of a, a media entrepreneur? Would that be a fair <laughs> description among the other things that you're doing? I would love to call myself a media entrepreneur. I would love to call myself. I'm, I'm not sure that I deserved it right now because I'm running it just for two years. Mm -hmm. So far it went well, but uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you thank very you. much, Nadia. Appreciate it.